Christian leaders have responded to the Hamas terrorist attacks on Israel with expressions of support for Jerusalem, calls for prayer, and concern about the assault's unfolding consequences. The attack resulted in over 1,200 Israeli casualties with more than 100 hostages taken into Gaza and over 2,000 wounded, making it the most devastating attack on Israel since the 1973 Yom Kippur War. Israel has mobilized now 300,000 reservists, the largest mobilization since that war in 1973. Here are some of the reactions of several notable Christian leaders. Joel Rosenberg, an American-Israeli author, likened the attack to Israel's 9-11, emphasizing the need to repel the attack, liberate the hostages, and punish Hamas. He has cautioned, though, against calls for genocide in Gaza. Brent Leatherwood, the new president of the Ethics and Religious Liberty Commission, decried the violence as horrific and called for global condemnation of Hamas's act targeting civilians and Israel's sovereignty, along, of course, with urgent prayers. Franklin Graham, evangelist and president of the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, invoked Psalm 122, praying for the peace of Jerusalem and God's protection for Israel. Southern Baptist Theological Seminary's president, Albert Moeller, stressed Israel's fight for its existence and security, emphasizing the importance of praying for its peace and flourishing. Greg Lowry, pastor of Harvest Christian Fellowship, encouraged prayers for the peace of Jerusalem, an end to terrorism, the safe return of hostages, and God's protection for Israel during this war against Hamas, backed by Iran. Pope Francis and other Catholic leaders have also expressed sorrow and concern over the recent outbreaks of violence in the Holy Land. They call for peace and diplomacy to be restored, stressing that war and terrorism only lead to more bloodshed. The Vatican supports a two-state solution and has offered to mediate for peace. The Catholic Patriarchate of Jerusalem also urges the international community to de-escalate the conflict and find a lasting solution. All in all, Catholic leaders in the Middle East particularly are pessimistic about the situation. However, they do call for prayers for its immediate resolution. On the other side of the conflict now, Iran's Supreme Leader, Ali Khamenei, not a Christian, praised the assault while denying Iran's involvement. Khamenei stated, Iran kisses the hands of those behind it. In recent years, the Southern Baptist Convention, the SBC, has experienced a slight 1% growth in church membership in New England, a region that is known for its cultural and political differences from the American South. This growth is seen as encouraging, especially considering declines in other parts of the United States. Factors contributing to this growth include political polarization and innovative outreach efforts by churches. Vermont, Rhode Island, and Maine have seen positive growth trends, while New Hampshire has experienced a decrease. Despite challenges like overcoming stereotypes and addressing pastoral loneliness, New England Baptists attribute their growth to faith, the power of God, and the persistence of churches in the region. They emphasize the transformation of individual lives as the most significant outcome of their efforts. In 1923, First Baptist Church of Greer, South Carolina, placed a time capsule in their new sanctuary's cornerstone, containing various items, including an ad for sanitary communion cups and a stewardship training book priced at $1. A century later, in 2023, they opened it for their sanctuary's centennial celebration, showcasing the weathered contents for a whole month. They plan to reseal it with new items, including a letter emphasizing the importance of preaching the gospel, and an iPhone with 2023 photos for future generations to explore. So, whenever 2123 rolls around, Redemption Media will be here to keep you posted. The Fellowship of Christian Athletes, FCA, has won a legal battle to regain access to San Jose Public Schools. Four years after losing recognition due to its faith statement and its seemingly anti-gay prerequisites, because of a line in that statement that declares marriage is between one man and one woman. This victory comes after a significant First Amendment ruling in federal appeals court, which sets a new precedent for free exercise protections. The FCA's case is part of a series of lawsuits over campus access for Christian clubs. They were initially denied approval back in 2019 for violating district-wide non-discrimination policies, and a teacher campaigned against them due to their faith statement on marriage. 
The San Jose School District adopted an all-comers policy, which the FCA contested on First Amendment grounds. The Ninth Circuit Court eventually ruled in favor of the FCA, asserting that the district's policies unfairly targeted the Christian club. This case, influenced by recent Supreme Court decisions, has broader implications for protecting students' First Amendment rights and ensuring equal treatment for religious groups. The FCA plans to return to serving the campuses with strong relationships between teachers and students. Christian McCaffrey's 14-game touchdown streak is a franchise record for the San Francisco 49ers, but he gives all credit to God. A lifelong Catholic, McCaffrey prays for teammates, opponents, and expresses gratitude while he's on the field. He believes surrendering to God provides peace and perspective. McCaffrey's faith also influences his teammates positively, fostering Bible studies and further fellowship. His favorite Bible verse, Proverbs 1 verse 7, is all about fearing the Lord. In April, McCaffrey announced his engagement to Olivia Culpo, a former Miss Universe, with both expressing the importance of God in their relationship. After the New Orleans Saints' 34-0 victory over the New England Patriots, Demario Davis, a veteran linebacker and team captain, used his post-game press conference to discuss his faith and the power of the cross. He emphasized that football does not provide the answers people need in life. Davis spoke about the difficulty of finding time for church due to football commitments, but encouraged bringing church to his life and, of course, his teammates' lives as well. He emphasized the importance of not masking one's hurt and pain and pointed out that the cross can help not only spiritually, but also in daily life. Davis expressed gratitude for his platform on a Sunday to share his faith. During the press conference, he allowed questions related to life and deeper discussions about his shared beliefs. Davis mentioned that the team regularly engages in prayer, Bible study, and chapel sessions to strengthen their faith and support each other, both on and off the field. Their mission is to make the cross and the power of God available to everyone, regardless of their beliefs. So Davis is a saint both on and off the field. Bear Grylls recently fulfilled a dream by getting baptized in the Jordan River, where Jesus Christ was also baptized. He expressed admiration for the story and symbolism of Jesus' baptism, emphasizing the themes of new life and vision. Grills, known for his show Man vs. Wild, is vocal about his Christian faith and believes in a more personal connection with Christ, differentiating it from organized religion. He values community, honesty, faith, and love within the church, but criticizes superficial elements like performances and music. In his own words, for me, faith is not very churchy. It's not very religious. It's just a sense that I really believe there's something out there that we're loved. He continued to say, we're given a light and strength to live life. For me, Christ has been a quiet, empowering daily presence to tackle life with that sort of light inside me. The Ukrainian Bible Society unveiled a modern Ukrainian Bible translation, a significant event attended by religious leaders from various denominations. The translation, a result of long-term efforts, reflects a growing demand for Bibles in Ukraine. The Ukrainian Ministry of Culture pledged support for Ukrainian churches, emphasizing the importance of promoting the Word of God in Ukrainian. Metropolitan Epiphanius expressed immense joy at the new translation, while the president of the Ukrainian Bible Society, Rory Commandant, also celebrated the achievement. Russian media noted the translation's significance, though there were critical voices regarding the Orthodox Church of Ukraine's participation, labeling it a schismatic church. Pope Francis has imposed a rule of secrecy, or fasting, from public discussion during the Synod on Synodality, a month-long summit addressing significant issues facing the Catholic Church. The goal is to protect the spiritual discussions aimed at resolving the Church's polarization. Participants are expected to maintain confidentiality regarding their interventions and those of others. This move is seen as an effort to create a safe space for participants to discuss sensitive topics like sexuality, LGBTQI inclusion, female ordination, and more. However, it has led to a lack of public information causing some to make assumptions or create ungrounded expectations. The format of this synod and synods in general is also evolving, with lay people having a more substantial say in the church's future and new ideas and positions are emerging as this process unfolds. Pope Francis is still worried about climate change. 
In his new apostolic exhortation, Laudato Deo, he expresses deep dissatisfaction with the lack of progress in addressing climate change, particularly in the eight years since the release of his environmental encyclical, Laudato Si. He criticizes inadequate responses to the climate crisis, the denial of climate change's causes, and the growing concentration of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere. The Pope warns of the dire consequences of continued inaction, such as more frequent and intense heat waves, flooding, droughts, and the melting of polar ice caps. He rebukes the notion that overpopulation is to blame, emphasizing that richer nations are the main contributors to the problem. Pope Francis calls for a significant shift in Western lifestyles, advocates for renewable energy, and blames economic greed for hindering progress. He stresses the need for binding international commitments to address climate change urgently, and concludes by presenting spiritual reasons for Christians to care for the environment, drawing from biblical references and the beauty of the world. Catholic and faith-based organizations are welcoming this document as a timely call to action. While some United States Catholic bishops have been criticized for not prioritizing climate change, Pope Francis singles out the United States in his exhortation, urging Western nations to reduce their emissions. Despite differences in opinion, some evangelical leaders are hopeful that Laudato Deum can inspire climate action within their communities. Lauren Cunningham, the founder of Youth with Mission, YWAM, passed away peacefully at the age of 88 in his home on October 6. Lauren and his wife Darlene established YWAM in 1960 with an aim of involving youth in mission work. Lauren leaves behind a legacy and a global movement of Christians dedicated to serving Jesus, where there are tens of thousands of full-time staff known as YWAMers in every nation of the world. According to Christianity Today, during COVID-19 and health-related travel restrictions, Cunningham used Zoom to speak with people on every continent. He spoke often of the need for more Bible translations in more languages and urged people to live full on for Jesus. He would later say, it's been a great life. I'd say to anyone, have a purpose, have a call, make sure that you are doing it for God and his purposes. He is love and you must show his love. All right, that's all we've got for you today. Please consider subscribing and stay tuned for more Christian news by Christians for Christians. Bye. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good.